Hi guys, I'm wearing my IT Crowd t-shirt today because we're going to be flipping coding. We're going to be flipping coding, flipping cards. And before long, you'll be flipping coding too. Cards, flipping, with code, in Unity, after the fade. Okay, so what the plan is, is we are going to uh, simulate a, a flipping of a card uh, today. So we're going to have like a face card, and then we're going to get it so that it rotates and flips over to the back side and then eventually just flips over to the other side there and we're all going to do this in code and the way we're going to do it is we're actually going to cheat we're going to we're going to actually use a scale uh, rather than um to, rather than actually having two sides to uh, like create a two-faced card we're actually going to uh, fake it now the rotation is actually going to uh, when you when you actually hold the card up like that you see what i mean it actually kind of looks like it's getting thinner and then eventually getting thicker and that's the illusion that we're going to go for uh, is actually a scaling of the card rather than uh, doing something in 3D because it's actually a lot easier to do that than it is in 3D uh, because you need to have two sides and sometimes you get clipping and Z buffer issues and a whole bunch of other things so we're, we're not going to do that we're just going to fake it just by pretending to make it flip we're actually just going to do that and then switch the images and that's going to be faster than the eye can pick up and um, just to create the illusion that the card is actually flipping in space. So that's the that's today's plan anyway. So I flip over to our main view here. Okay, so uh, what we have just now is we just have our normal flip. So when I run this and I click on hit me, this is, this is the project as it was uh, last time. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new, uh, a new uh, class, and we're going to call this card flipper. So we're going to do create. So we're going to go into our scripts folder, create C sharp script, and we're going to call this. Oops, I'm going to the card at the road. And we're going to call this card flipper. And I'm going to fire that up inside Visual Studio. Okay. So our card flipper, like everything else in, in Unity, everything's a component. Uh, your game object is effectively just a point in space. So we're going to create another component, which is a, a script component. Uh, and we're just going to create a blank one just now, nothing in it. And we're going to add this to our card. And then when we click on the card, this card flipper will actually do the flipping for us. Because uh, right now, if we go back to our debug change card, you see that every time we do that, we actually call this method here, which is a toggle face. Remember, we, we use the toggle face to be true. Uh, toggle face to be false and all that kind of good stuff when you click on the, the grey button. So that's all done inside here. We're going to change this code later on so that we actually use the methods that we create inside this class. So there's a few things that we need to set up uh, for the card flipper. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create uh, two internal fields that we're going to use uh, for later on and it is a sprite renderer because we need to actually capture the sprite renderer for the the current um class uh, sorry the, the the current object now it's already on the card so again if we flip back to the card here you can see we have a sprite renderer this is the sprite renderer that we're going to create a reference to uh, and the other one we want to do is we want to create a reference to the card model because we we obviously need to know what card is being shown. So the, the card that's going to be shown uh, is contained inside the card model. And what is a card? A card is basically just an index. That's all it is. It's just an index. So we have our card model. Okay, so that's our two internal ones. So these are not visible in the, the inspect. Remember, these are private, so they won't be exposed in the inspector. So again, if we go back to our card, we see that we have our card model here and we have our sprite renderer. So these are the two components and we're going to be adding uh, the component that we're creating here the card flipper to this game object so now we need two public properties 
Now these public fields, they are going to, uh, sorry, public uh, fields, these public fields are going to expose uh, an animation curve, which I'll explain in just a second, and also the duration, in other words, the time it takes to flip the card. So we're going to set both of these to be public, obviously. Animation curve, and we'll call that scale curve. If I can spell rightly, and public float animation. So we're going to make this half a second. Uh, so the scale curve, what's the scale curve going to do is it's going to go from one, which is the starting scale point. So that's the full size of the card, which I've just lost. Uh, so that's the full size of the card. So that's scale one to scale zero, which means it's on the edge. It's squished like that. So you can't actually see it to one again. So how do we do that? Well, Let's just add this component that we've just created here. We're going to add that to our game object. So we go over to the game object, make sure it compiles OK. There's no errors. That's fine. There's a, um, a warning there about inconsistent um, lines. We don't need to worry about that just now. So we'll click on Add Component, and you'll see that Card Flipper is already there. If it's not there, just type in Card, and it will pop up. The, this search is actually, you know, and it's not too bad uh, here because we, we don't have that many components, but uh, it's much easier to find it if you use the search uh, field and it's easy to know what the search field is uh, because uh, We've already done it inside our we've named the class up here. So card flipper it is So we click on card flipper and you see that it's got a scale curve there and the duration These are the two properties these sorry. These are the two fields that we've exposed they are now exposed inside the Inspector. So if you click on sales curve, you get this, which is kind of whoa. Um, what you want to do is just create uh, a line here. So click on the line, and you'll see that it clamps to uh, one there and one over here. And you want to go to 0 0.5 and right click at 0 0.5 and click on add key. Now you don't have to be precise about this, but if you click on the key that you've just added, hold down the shift key on the keyboard and then drag it to the bottom. This means that it is only moving up and down and not left and right. Now that's important because we want to actually get it as close to zero as possible. And that's it. You see that the, the figure on the, the right hand side is zero and we're actually 0.4994 seconds that's it's as close to 0.5 as, as, as we need to get it just as long as you get it down to zero and then with it at zero just release the mouse button and you see that we now have a nice parabola so we have a valley effectively we have 1.0 going down to zero going back up to one now that's our simulation of this is at one this is at zero and this is at one again Okay, so that's our card flip. This is what's going to actually do all the, the hard work for us. So close that and then save. And you see that it's, it does appear after a couple of seconds. I don't know why it doesn't refresh. It's, I seem to remember it refreshing in, in four, but five, it needs a little click to sort of get there. But you can see that this has now got the parabola there and we can see that, that uh, clearly. Okay, so back to the code. Um, so we have uh, up here our private fields for the sprite renderer and the card model. So how do we get that? Well, it's added to the game object that contains the card model and the sprite renderer. So all we need to do is just create our awake, which is uh, very similar to a constructor. Uh, don't ever use constructors in mono behavior. There's, there's various reasons for that. I'll, I'll let you look them up. But the, the short answer is uh, Unity uh, goes through um, uh, certain um, initialization routines which could cause the constructor to be called more than once if you have initialization code inside the constructor that could be bad because then things get initialized more than once and, uh, and cause a whole bunch of issues so don't use constructors use either awake or start so I'm going to choose to use awake in this instance and I'm going to grab a reference to the sprite renderer 
just using the get component method. And then I use these angle brackets, these chevrons here, and then I specify the type of component that I want to grab. So in this case, I want to grab the sprite renderer. And the next thing I want to do is I want to grab a copy of the card model. Now, get component is a method of the, the game object and it says get the component that has been attached to me of this particular type. So you're getting the card model component or you're getting the sprite renderer component and you could even do you know, something like um, get component and that would get this component that we we're just writing just now. So that's our awake method. The awake method is, is all it's doing is it's just getting the, uh, the components that we're going to use later on. So we're going to create a, a public method. Called flip card. And that's going to take a, a number of variables. The first one is the start image. So that's the image that people see at the, at the, the, um, the, the start of the flip. Uh, and we're going to create another one called uh, end image. That's the image that we're going to flip to. So we start off with this image and then we flip around and we get that image there. So that's our start image and that's our end image. And then finally we do need to know the card in net, which will do in just a second. Now, none of the magic actually happens in here. The, the magic actually happens in another um, method, which is actually a coroutine. Now, I, again, I won't go into what coroutines are just now. That's actually in another video, um, which I'll, I'll post up. It's in my Unity tips and tricks section. Um, but suffice to say that we need to um, run the coroutine. Uh, it runs um, in the background. Uh, and it uses a, uh, an enumerator to uh, update the the scale. Um, so all we have to do in this flip card is we have to stop the coroutine because if it's running, if somebody's clicking, hammering the, the, the hit me button, we want to stop the coroutine from working and then restart it. So to stop a coroutine, we do stop coroutine, and then we specify the coroutine that we want to um, to stop and then we're going to call one called start coroutine. Now let's build a, a, a blank coroutine just now. So I enumerator flip sprite. Now you notice that it takes the exact same parameters. Okay, so that is our coroutine. Oops. Uh, it doesn't return anything yet, so I'm just going to put in yield turn break. Uh, and the only reason I'm putting this, uh, sorry, uh, the only reason I'm putting this um, line here in is because I don't want that to go red. <laughs> That's the only reason. We're actually going to get rid of that in about a second. So we do stop coroutine, flip card. Start image, end image, card index. Uh, there's various ways to, to, to create and call a, a coroutine, but this is um, probably the easiest one. And I misspelled that because it should be flip. Uh, and then we want to do start coroutine. So this is how we actually execute a coroutine. And you can see that we, we pass in a, um, there's various parameters here. There's, there's three options. There's the I enumerator option, there's the method name, the, if you type it in quotes, I don't particularly like that method, uh, it's not very type safe, if you change the name of the routine for some for some reason, if you refactor it for example, if you say well that's not what that routine does anymore and then you rename it, then it, it doesn't cause a compilation error and nothing happens. Uh, and the other one is the method name and object value, again you're using a string. Uh, and you're passing in an object, which means you've got to do some casting in the other end, or maybe even unboxing. It's a bit of a mess. 
So I don't like those ones. I actually prefer the first one, which is when you pass in the actual method itself that you want to call. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, so that is our flip card uh, method. Okay, so let's get rid of the flip. So this is the flip is the actual um, method that does the the flipping of the card. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to call the evaluate method of the scale curve and to determine at a particular point in time what the scale is. So how do we do that? Well, first of all we tell the sprite renderer what the starting image is. We then create a variable for our time. So our time is going to get incremented uh, and while time is less than or equal to 1 we are going to go through and we are going to evaluate the point on the scale at a particular time. So if we go back to here and we click on this so you see that this is at zero time so when time t equals zero it is one so the scale is one at time t zero if you go to point two, so in other words we're 0.2 seconds into this, we are about 1.65 scale. So we're almost half scale. And then if we go to 0.25, we are actually at half scale here. Until eventually we get all the way over to here and we end up back at one. So when time is one, scale is one. So our current scale then is scale curve dot evaluate and then we pass in the time which is our variable here. And because we're in a while loop and we have a control variable called time, we have to increment time. But our time uh, is actually scaled by the duration here. So uh, if we want to scale it by the duration, so for example, we can we can change this from 0 0.5 seconds to 2 seconds to 0.25 seconds or whatever time we want it to be. So we have to increase it. So we do time equals time uh, plus, and then we have a, a class here called time, uh, and that has a property on it called delta time divided by duration. So that there says take the delta time, divide it by the duration, and then add it to this variable here, time. So if we have uh, a delta time of 0.3, then when we divide that by 0.5, that's the same as multiplying it by 2, so we actually perform the scale faster because you're actually adding more time in that. Okay, so that's us adding our time. Now what we need to do is we need to tell the local scale that uh, it, sorry, let me rephrase that. What we need to do now is we need to scale the image, uh, which we're not actually going to scale the image, we're going to scale the object that the image belongs and because we scale the, the parent object we scale everything either attached to that object or a child of that object so it's very it's a very very clean way of doing something it means that if you have things that are attached so for example if you have a table and on side that on that table you have bottles and you have a cup and saucer and all that kind of stuff and they're all parent and child objects if you have a game object that contains all of that and you scale it, it everything scales uniformly and everything stays you know the, the bottles stay on top of the table all that kind of stuff so let's scale so vector 3 equals scale
So we're scaling on the x-axis. The x-axis is the one that goes along, and we are wanting to increase and decrease that here. That's the cat, by the way. <laughs> um, he likes to bring his toys down so that we play with them. I'm not kidding, that is actually the cat. Look. Yeah, honestly, it's a cat. Thinks he's a dog. Anyhow. Okay. So that's as we're uh, scaling along the x-axis, which means we're going to scale that way as opposed to that way, or that way, which is the z-axis. So z-axis is that way, y-axis is that way, and x-axis is this way. We're going to scale on the x-axis to squish the image. And then we just do transform dot local scale equals local scale. So this is our, our temporary variable that we create. So this takes in the local scale. Whatever we have on X and Z, sorry, X, Y, and Z, we take in. And we only alter the X component. Now, when we get to the halfway marker, we're going to take the front image that we get. Where's my card? I've lost my card. Oh, there we go. We're going to take the front image that we get and then we're going to flip that out. Okay, so the user is not going to see it. They're not going to see this, this transformation. Uh, so anytime after 0 0.5, we're flipping the image out. So if we do if time is greater than or equal to 0 0.5, sprite render dot sprite equals end image. That's it. That's all we need to do. Uh, and then we do yield turn new weight for fix top page. Uh, and that's it. So we are setting the, the sprite renderer, the current image to be the start image. We create a variable called time. Uh, we have a while loop. So all of this is our while loop. So while time is less than or equal to one, uh, we evaluate the scale given our curve. So remember the curve that we designed. And remember you can you can alter this as well. So you can add more keyframes and you can get it to do like and like that kind of jelly kind of thing like that. You can get it to do that. Um, once the, the scale has been evaluated, we then uh, increment our time counter. And our time counter is whatever the delta time is. So the delta time comes from system, and we divide that by the duration. So we, we can actually, because that property has been exposed, that field has been exposed, sorry, uh, we can alter that uh, inside the inspector. Uh, we then grab our local scale and we alter the X component of the local scale. So we scale along the horizontal and then we reapply that local variable uh, back to the transforms local scale. And then we check to see if the time is greater than 0 0.5. And if it is, we set the current image to be the end image. And finally, down here, we have to do this because we are running an enumerator. So we have to return uh, some kind of enumeration. So what we're returning here is we're returning, this is actually a, a class that comes with Unity. So we're waiting for the next fixed update and that's what we're doing. So we've got one more check to do here. Um, <clears throat> and that is if the card index is minus one, then we want to uh, hide the, the, the card from view. We want to show the, the reverse side of the card. Uh, otherwise, we want to show the card index. So, uh, at the end of all this, I'm going to do if card index is minus one. Uh, we alter the model by saying toggle face false. Otherwise, now this is where card index comes in. Because although we are altering the, the image, we're not actually altering the, the card model here. So, the, the image is very much 
separate from the card model. Remember we have our render component, we have our card model component, and then we have our card flipper. So we now, after we've, um, after we've rendered uh, everything, we now need to actually alter the model. So we do model dot card index oops, equals card index. So that's our variable from up here. That's our parameter from up here, sorry. And then we do model dot toggle face true. Because we want to show the, the face of the card rather than the verse of the card. All right, so that's card flipper. Um, Strange enough, we uh, we can't test it just now because um, let me go back to here and we run it. We still get the same thing because we have to change our debug. So that's what we're going to do just now. So we're going to change our debug. Okay. So there's only a couple of things that we need to add to our debug uh, change card. Uh, we need to add our card flipper. Let's call it flipper. Why not? And then inside awake, we do flipper equals card dot get component. Card flipper. Now instead of toggle face. We don't actually, go, we're not actually going to call the, the, the card model uh, itself. We are actually going to do, call the flipper this time. So we're going to call the flipper with flip card. Um, so this is a bit convoluted, but we need to uh, grab some information from the card model. Um, if the card index is zero, uh, that means that we're the, the first card again. So we're going to have to, um, set it to be the back card so that when we flip 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 eventually we get through we end up back at the the, the closing of the the deck of cards so i'm going to do card model this is just a sort of special case when it's the the first card dot faces card model dot faces dot length minus one card model dot card back minus one, so that's our minus one index. And then down here, we are, let's get rid of all of this. And instead of that, we're gonna do if card index is greater than zero. If it's greater than zero, we're gonna do flipper dot flip card, card model, dot faces, card index, minus one, card model, okay, so if the card index is greater than zero, we are going to take the, the previous card, so whatever the, the, the previous card was, and we're going to take the current index and we're going to pass in this new card index here. And then we're going to add one to it. Uh, but if card index is less than zero, we have to do something a little bit um, we have to um, go from the the um, reverse of the card. So imagine this is their face card. So we have to show this one first and then flip into the, the new card index. So we do flipper, flip card, card model dot card back, card model dot faces, card index, card index. Now remember, this is just debug code. Uh, our actual our game code is not going to look um, anything like this because we're actually going to be using a deck of cards, which is our next tutorial. Um, <clears throat> we're going to talk about decks and hands and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and uh, we're not going to use this debug change card 
thing again uh, because it served its purpose after this. So now that we have everything put in there, we can um, run this. So now when we click on hit me, we now get our card that does that. Now, unfortunately, you've probably noticed that it goes instead of, I don't know, it's a kind of subtle movement, but it, it's not flipping on the axis. We can fix that. So we go to our images folder and you see our deck of cards here. And we click on deck of cards. Uh, so we're clicking on the first one there, so we just need to close that. Uh, click on Sprite Editor, and you'll see that all of these have as the top right there. So instead of doing that, what we can do is we can do the pivot in the center, and we can change the grid, which is uh, 72, oops, 72 by 100, and we just make that the center. So click on Slice. And you see that everything is now that is now in the center. You see the circle there is now in the center, which means that's where the pivot point is. So click on apply and click on X. And now when we run it, we now get our cards flipping. So we flip between the cards. And it happens so fast that you can't actually see that the images are now flipped. Okay. So just to recap, card flipper is the component that gets added to the card and it has access to the sprite renderer and the card model. We created a method called flip card which starts and stops a, a coroutine. Sorry, if the coroutine is running, it stops it. Um, and then it starts a coroutine called flip card, uh, called flip, sorry. Uh, and flip is the coroutine that uh, sets the, the sprite renderer to be the first image. Uh, halfway through, it sets the sprite renderer to be the end image and it uses a animation curve to control the scale of the the card so we're scaling on the x-axis so we flip that way flip that way and then all we did uh, for our debug change card is we uh, removed a couple of lines down here and instead of calling the, the card model to change the, the the card we actually call our flipper component uh, to change the card. <clears throat> okay, so that's it for today. Hi guys, thanks very much for watching. Uh, it's been flipping fun, flipping coding with you all. Um, catch us next time. We will be uh, dealing with uh, shuffling cards this time, uh, or rather next time. I should say not this time. This time was flipping. We flipped. We flipped a lot of things. I flip you over. Uh, so until next time, uh, stay safe. Uh, if you want to subscribe, uh, the subscribe thing is down there on the little bottom, just down, just can't miss it, just right down there. Um, uh, click on that and that'll take you to the subscribe place. Uh, and then after that, uh, you will get some notifications, uh, hopefully, uh, that, that uh, new videos have been posted up. Um, so once again, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you like what you see, comments are below. As usual, just just write down there. Just if you want to do some comments down there, see some of you typing already. Um, just to see what you think about the channel and all that kind of stuff. So uh, thanks again, uh, and we will catch you next time.